I understand why, why we. What, what, what's the purpose of sending a car to Mars? There's no. There's no point. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. it's just for fun. Yeah. Um, and and to get the public excited. Hello, everybody. You were listening to Feed Your Mind. And so, why would SpaceX fake space is the question of the day. And so, SpaceX is a private space company, but they're working very closely with NASA. Now, we know why NASA was created. NASA was created in 1958 in order to hide the flat Earth. And I explain this in detail in my video called How and Why NASA Hides Flat Earth. And so, now we must begin to ask, what is the SpaceX involvement in all of this? And so it all began in 2001 with Elon Musk and his Mars Oasis project, which was his concept of colonizing Mars and taking plants up to Mars and progressing the human experience out into the universe and colonizing planets, specifically Mars. And so this concept project ended up turning into SpaceX in 2002 when SpaceX was officially launched by Elon Musk. And their official goals was to reduce space transportation costs, colonize Mars, and also an interesting goal was to regain public interest in space exploration and also conveniently increase the budget of NASA. And so right there, it looks like a big part of this whole interest in colonizing Mars is about increasing the budget of NASA. And so that doesn't surprise me that this seems to be all about money. And not too long ago, that's exactly what happened because when Trump took office, one of the first things he did was increase the budget of NASA with the interest of heading to Mars. So what's all this obsession with Mars? Is it simply as SpaceX had originally stated? Is this all about increasing interest in space exploration for the public so that we can freely give up more money to NASA without resistance? Like a lot of people don't understand why we're, what, what, what's the purpose of sending a car to Mars? There's no, there's no point, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. It's just for fun yeah. um, and, and to get the public excited. Because with NASA getting their budget increased to $20 billion a year now, I'm not so sure that they would obtain an increase in funding when all other government agencies were losing funding. You see, this Mars agenda is what justifies NASA requesting an increase. And so now we must ask, what is this money really being used for? Because what is so advanced about being on Mars? Mars is a very uninhabitable place according to mainstream science. I mean, there's nothing out there. It's just an empty planet with no vegetation, no water. And if you're gonna find water under the planet or something, that's just wouldn't even make any sense. I mean, there's obviously no accessible water on Mars or any other planet for that matter. In fact, if you watch my videos, you will start to realize that planets are actually gas giants. Planets are not solid objects. They are not physical objects. Planets are simply stars in the sky. Scientists admit that several planets are gas giants. The ones that they're acting like are real actual solid planets is a deception that goes very deep. And you're going to have to catch up on my channel because I discussed this in my heliocentric deception playlist where you can learn about how planets are all part of this Illuminati pagan sun worship cult because these planets are named after pagan entities all of their names like Mars Jupiter Pluto all of these names are named after pagan gods and they have the whole world believe in their actual solid objects in the sky but they are not once again research the word gas giants that is the name that scientists use to describe several planets so I take it a step further and insist that all of the planets are gas giants which is simply a fancy word for the name star you cannot land on a planet they're just balls of gas they're nothing more more than a star. And so I know that the highest levels of NASA are the ones that know about flat earth and they're the ones that know about what planets really are and all of that. So where does Elon Musk come into the picture? Does he actually know as well? Well, I would suppose he does. In fact, I might take it a step further and suggest that this guy might actually be possibly like the false prophet or something in the Bible. I mean, this guy I cannot trust. I even uncovered information about Elon Musk being involved in this microchip technology. And I put that on my Brainstorm channel. So you can check out my Brainstorm channel if you want to find that video. But it seems Elon Musk is involved in the whole microchip program that the Bible even speaks of. Where in order to buy and sell, you will be required to have some type of mark which sounds a lot like this microchip that they want to start implanting in people in order to make purchases sometime in the near future. 
And so at first I used to try to give Elon Musk the benefit of the doubt and I used to wonder if he was simply a genius who was working on all of these technologies not aware that space is fake because technically this technology can easily exist. I mean, I don't see any problem with Elon Musk having the ability to have shuttles take off into the sky and then land back onto the earth. That's not something that I feel is out of the realm of possibilities. We are very advanced in technology in this time and age, and so there's no reason why the technology for spacecraft couldn't exist. But the thing is, there is no outer space. I encourage you to check out my Operation Fishbowl video, which proves there's a dome firmament above us. I also have a dome firmament playlist you can check out called 100% Proof of the Dome Firmament. The stars and all of that in the sky, that's all part of the dome firmament system. When you look up in the sky at nighttime, NASA has brainwashed you since a kid to believe that there is an outer space galaxy that goes on for an infinite amount of space. And there's all types of other galaxies and solar systems out there. And all of that is explained on my channel why they want you to believe that. There's overwhelming evidence that space does not exist. And so start getting familiar with the videos on my channel if this is the first you are hearing of this. But back to what I was saying about the technology for space travel. Maybe the technology isn't quite there if you think about it, because what exactly are these rockets propelling off of? I mean, in the vacuum of space, there's plenty of questions when it comes to rockets propelling forward using the technology of a rocket booster. Many of us in the Flat Earth community are starting to realize that rockets cannot push off against the emptiness of space with rocket booster technology. And so if you think about it, the technology for space travel actually does not exist, because there's nothing for the rocket boosters to push off against. Negative point eight atmospheres, like it's full throttle, it can't even get off the ground now. <laughs> I can't do anything. And so that brings into question this strange relationship between SpaceX and NASA. So is NASA trying to push off their Mars mission into the SpaceX program so that if the program is determined by the public to be fake, SpaceX would take the blame instead of NASA? Because both companies are working towards the goal of reaching Mars. And from the looks of it, it looks like SpaceX is going to be the ones to do it first. So if they are allowed to actually attempt to pull off a fake Mars mission, it's not going to look any realer than that spaceman in that red car that was flying around in space and even Elon Musk himself said that red car in space looks fake what were your what was going through your mind how how amazed were you to see your roadster up there with Starman <laughs> uh, just cruising along with the blue planet and how long will we be getting live views do you think from the car well I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible um, and you can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. Um, and, you know, the, the, the colors all look, look kind of weird in space. There's no atmospheric occlusion. You know, you know, like, everything looks too crisp. And so was Elon Musk saying that the red car in space looks fake because he knows that it really is and he is subconsciously telling us that it is fake because he's not impressed with how it turned out? You see, there was a lot of bloopers in that whole Falcon launch video. And us Flat Earthers found several discrepancies in that video footage. I mean, Elon Musk even admits that they did nothing special to the car in order to prepare it for space. Um, and, um... But we know we didn't really test any of those materials for, you know, is it space hardened or whatever, you know. So it just has the same seats that like a normal car has. It's just literally a normal car in space, which I kind of like the absurdity of that. Um, and if you look closely, there's a, on the dashboard, there's a tiny roadster with a tiny spaceman. <laughs> so because Hot Wheels made a Hot Wheels roadster. And a friend of mine uh, um, suggested, "Hey, why don't you put that Hot Wheels roadster with a tiny space van on the, you know, in the car too? I'm like that'd be cool. Sure. <laughs> so we did that. Um, I mean, it's kind of silly and fun, but I, I think, I think that's, you know, silly fun things are important. Um, and <laughs> normally, for a new rocket, you know, they'd launch like a block of concrete or something like that. I mean, that's so boring." <laughs> Um, 
And uh, I think that's just the imagery of it is something that's going to get people excited around the world. Um, and it's, it's still tripping me out. I mean, I'm tripping balls here. <laughs> so explain to me how the tires didn't blow up and burst because balloons burst at 33 miles up at the max. So that has to do with how when the balloon gets higher up in the air, the balloon begins to expand and eventually pop. There's been no weather balloon that has made it past 33 miles up. And so if this Tesla car is in space, wouldn't the tires pop? I mean, this thing should be at least, what, 250 miles up like the ISS? And so shouldn't those tires pop? And then when that Tesla car is in the sun, they say the temperature can get up to at least 250 degrees. And when it's out of the sunlight, they say the temperature can drop to as low as negative 250 degrees. And so can that car really handle those massive fluctuations in temperature? I mean, there's videos of cars that were melting here on Earth due to the cars being in an area where it was getting fried like a magnifying glass because of the glass building that it was sitting in front of. This is how hot it is in Italy. The car has melted. It's actually melted. The, everything, the mirror, the lights, the indicators, the plastic off the side. <laughs> Unbelievable. Back of the light. Now that's off. This is London's latest hotspot. In the middle of the city's bustling heart, a bizarre beam of light radiates onto the street. Powerful, dazzling, and searingly hot. The cause of this phenomenon? This 37 story tower. Once known as the Walkie Talkie, it's been renamed as the Walkie Scorchy. The half-built building's curved construction has had an unfortunate effect. If you look up, you can see it is curved. And so that's a vast area up there, and it's collecting a lot of solar energy. Now, if that was to go out in all directions, it wouldn't really matter. But it's focusing down onto a point, and it's focusing down here. So all that solar energy is getting pushed down here, and the temperatures down there are getting really, really high. So high it managed to record a temperature of an astonishing 92.6 degrees Celsius. Well, the sun has started to come out and it's already hitting the building behind me and already you can feel quite an intense heat here. Anything in the direct glare of the reflection can literally go up in smoke. It damaged this car parked nearby. It's caused carpets to smolder, tiles to smash. It's so hot you can even fry an egg and singe your hair trying. That's hot. Just as you march through, you really feel the heat. It's quite intense. Guess where's you coming through? The tan. Well, here we go. You can stay all afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it is quite hot here, yes. The designers say the problem is the current elevation of the sun. Over the next two to three weeks, weather permitting, it will shine directly onto the building. While they say they're working on the problem, the worst of it lasts for just two hours. And it's during one of the busiest times in the day, lunchtime. It's certainly too much for Londoners used to murkier climbs. Best to keep calm and keep covered. Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera, London. A piece of bare metal in space under constant sunlight can get as hot as 260 degrees Celsius. So they said this car was beginning to melt literally. And so if a car can literally melt here on Earth being under 200 degrees, wouldn't that red Tesla car begin to melt at 250 degrees for sure? There should be some evidence. There's no way that car should be holding up in those temperatures because Elon Musk already admitted they did not do anything special to that car to prepare for space. And so the Potter's Clay Channel had found that during the live footage of this car floating around in space, it was actually a loop because when they went back to the live feed video, which they later removed, but during the live broadcast, they went to a scene. But 
this car was already supposed to be floating around in space, so that means the footage was not live footage. Also, Jaronism had found out that the rocket boosters was using the same footage. I mean, there was two screens showing each booster and what was going on, but it was the same footage. And then they later changed it to correct that mistake. Google allowed SpaceX, a private company, to do something against YouTube's policy and something that none of us should be okay with. It's something that no other channel is allowed to do. Who edits live video? Does the NFL, MLB, NHL, WWE, or the NBA? No. Does Red's Rhetoric, Sean Hufford, Sly Sparkane, or Soundly? No. When the rockets were landing, they were landing in the same spot, but then they later corrected that in order to have two separate images. And another thing I noticed with this whole rocket was with that smoke exhaust coming out of the rocket booster, I noticed green tint coming from that rocket booster. You see, NASA and SpaceX like to use a lot of green screen technology and augmented reality, so some things in the screen are actual physical objects, other things are actual green screen technologies so when I was observing the rocket exhaust coming out of the booster I noticed a green tint inside of the smoke is that possibly the green screen technology because they had the fake earth in the background with the fisheye lens curvature all of the images when you see earth with a curve on it it's a simple fisheye lens technology and so you might dismiss that that rocket booster is showing green in the middle of it but then I found this I was observing the rocket exhaust coming out of the rocket booster and then I noticed a glitch and then when I paused it I could see what appears to be green screen and so I would like to know what you think about this is this actually green screen showing up on live SpaceX footage the moment I'm like you on this uh, I missed greatly yeah. The, uh, <laughs> this is an emotional moment I'm like you on this uh, I missed Greatly. Yeah. These types of camera malfunctions happen very often. It's time for you guys to wake up and start looking at this footage and searching YouTube videos and finding all of these bloopers that we're finding in the Flat Earth community because there's a bunch of it. If you guys are still falling for this whole space thing, it just goes to prove that you have been brainwashed and that you need to snap out of it because these things are not that hard to spot out. And so there was even glitches on the Earth. I mean, there was moments on this SpaceX mission where you could see the Earth malfunction. Instead of seeing the circle of the Earth, you see some type of what would almost appear like a pixelated Earth. Where nothing else was pixelated, it was just the Earth that malfunctioned. So, I mean, there were so many things wrong with that whole SpaceX launch. I mean, if you still believe in space after that SpaceX launch, there's probably not much hope for humanity. There was even some grid technology that popped up. So when a reporter asked Elon Musk why he sent that car into space, not only did he say that it looks so fake that it must be real, but he also said he just did it all simply just for fun. Good boy. Like a lot of people don't understand what, why we're, so, what, what's the purpose of sending a car to Mars? There's no, there's no point. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. it's just for fun. Yeah. Um, and and to get the public excited. And their official goals was to reduce space transportation costs, colonize Mars 
and also an interesting goal was to regain public interest in space exploration and also conveniently increase the budget of NASA. And so let me know what you think about this video in the comment section. I want to hear from you. Why do you think a private company like SpaceX is being allowed to participate in the faking of space? What is the agenda behind it with the budget increase and everything? What do you think they're really using that money for? Discover the purest form of water. Pick up some HQH2O water. I'll leave a link in the description box. If you support this channel, leave a dollar in my Patreon page. It will really help to keep this channel going. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. This has been another episode of Feed Your Mind, signing off. Oh, oh, oh.